Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 19th of August. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar holds bilateral talks with Nepalese counterpart. Pakistan government accuses Imran Khan's PTI of spearheading anti-state agenda. And sibling festival Raksha Bandhan celebrated with fervor across India. And now for all the details. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Monday held bilateral talks with his Nepal East counterpart Arzu Rana Dhiuba, who is on a first official visit abroad. In a post on X, Jay Shankar said the two leaders discussed the multifaceted cooperation between India and Nepal in various sectors, including energy, trade, connectivity, and infrastructure development. He added that in a new milestone, Nepal will be exporting close to 1,000 megawatt of electricity to India. Our neighborhood first policy and unique people to people and cultural connect propel our relationship forward, he said. Later in the day, the Nepalese Foreign Minister also met Prime Minister Narendra Modi as part of a visit to New Delhi, extending the invitation from Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli to visit Nepal. Dioba is on a five-day official visit to India at the invitation of her Indian counterpart S. Jay Shankar. Her visit marks the first high-level visit from Nepal to India since the formation of the new coalition government of Nepali Congress and CPN-UML led by Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli. Moving on, thousands of Indian junior doctors on Monday refused to end their protests over the rape and murder of a fellow medic disrupting hospital services nearly a week after they launched a nationwide action demanding a safer workplace and a swift criminal probe. Protesters were seen holding banners, posters and raising slogans demanding justice for the victim and the implementation of the Central Protection Act for doctors and healthcare workers. The government has urged doctors to return to duty while it sets up a committee to suggest measures to improve protection for healthcare professionals. However, protesting doctors have said the indefinite cease work and sit-in will continue until their demands are met. We want to make doctors and not just a daughter of a daughter. We want to make a daughter of a daughter of a daughter. And until the CPA will not be able to do it, we will not be able to do it. Doctors across the country have held protests and have declined to see non-emergency patients following the August 9 killing of the 31-year-old medic who police say was raped and murdered at a hospital in the eastern city of Kolkata where she was a trainee. A police volunteer has been arrested and charged with the crime. India introduced sweeping changes to the criminal justice system including tougher sentences after the 2012 attack but campaigners say little has changed and not enough has been done to deter violence against women. Pakistan government this past weekend accused former Premier Imran Khan and his Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf of spearheading agenda against the country. In a scathing attack on Khan and his political party on Sunday, Pakistan's Information Minister Ataullah Tarar said PTI's social media handles were running a campaign against the Pakistan army, allegedly on the directions of foreign powers. Calling PTI a foreign-funded party, Tarar claimed that Khan's party was working to harm national integrity. He added that Hassan's provocative and terrible conversation with an Indian journalist which surfaced earlier in the day had fully exposed PTI's anti-state agenda. Tarar also stated that Fares Niazi Bushra collusion had caused harm to Pakistan for their nefarious designs. Former PM Khan's PTI has been facing a massive crackdown despite the jail leader winning a series of legal cases brought against him since he was ousted from power in 2022. 
earlier last month, authorities raided PTI Digital Wing offices and arrested their information secretary, Rauf Hassan, over allegations of PTI being involved in propaganda against the country. Khan's party, however, denies the accusations. Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir, often painted as a paradise, is a stark contrast to the reality faced by its residents. Behind the picturesque landscape, a tale of neglect and deprivation unfolds. People are crying out for basic amenities, infrastructure, and a government that truly cares. A report. The picturesque region of Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir has been grappling with socio economic challenges. The lack of development, coupled with the indifference of successive governments, has led to a sense of alienation and frustration among the residents. They lament that even basic amenities like safe drinking water remain elusive for many. A resident from the region highlights that even infrastructure, another crucial aspect of development, is in a deplorable state. This not only hampers daily life but also hinders economic activity as transportation of goods and services is severely impacted. The government's apparent lack of interest in addressing the lack of development is further exacerbating the hardships faced by the people. Residents have long accused the region, ruled by Islamabad through its proxies, of being a victim of systematic discrimination at the hands of its administering authority. They lament that while Pakistan claims the region enjoys autonomous rule, the reality for the people is starkly different. Basic amenities, which should be readily available for everyone, are becoming a luxury for many in the Pakistan-occupied region. And Sri Lanka's main presidential candidates kicked off their election campaigns this past weekend, drawing thousands of people to their rallies ahead of the crucial vote. Drone footage captured large crowds listening to speeches by three frontrunners, incumbent President Ranil Vikramasinghe, main opposition leader Sajid Premadasa and Marxist-leaning parliamentarian Anura Kumara. Among the multiple candidates, including Namal Rajapaksa, the son of Sri Lanka's former president Mahinda Rajapaksa, incumbent president Vikramasinghe is seen as the most market and reform-friendly option. He assumed the presidency in July 2022 as the economy crumbled under a severe financial crisis triggered by a record shortfall of foreign exchange reserves. The island nation, grappling with the fallout of its worst financial crisis in decades, will hold elections on September 21st, a crucial step in charting Sri Lanka's path out of the crisis unleashed by exhausting foreign reserves, sending the economy into a freefall and defaulting on foreign debt in 2022. Meanwhile, student demonstrators who ousted Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina have rejected calls from Bangladesh's two main political parties for quick elections and are considering creating their own party to sustain their movement, Reuters has reported. Student leaders have discussed forming a political party to end the duopoly, said Mahfuj Alam, who chairs a committee tasked with liaising between the government and social groups such as teachers and activists. Speaking to Reuters, Alam said a decision will be made within a month. Tahami Chaudhary, another protest coordinator, said there is a high chance they will form a political party. We don't have any other plan that could break the binary without forming a party, Chaudhary was quoted as saying by Reuters. Nahid Islam, Bangladesh's interim telecommunication minister, echoed a similar sentiment, stating that the government is not considering calls from the main political parties, Awami League and BNP, to hold fresh polls as early as this fall. To ensure that we need structural reforms, which will definitely take some time, he said. 
Indians celebrated the sibling festival of Raksha Bandhan with traditional fervor and gaiety on Monday with women and girls tying sacred threads called Rakhis on wrists of their brothers. The festival is celebrated as a mark of revered bondage between sisters and brothers. Take a look. Hindus across India celebrated the Hindu sibling festival of Raksha Bandhan on Monday with women tying sacred threads called Rakhis on their brothers' wrists. On this occasion, women in India's northern Baramula district tied Rakhis to Indian Army personnel deployed along the line of control bordering Pakistan. Similar scenes unfolded at the Atari Vaga border where locals expressed gratitude and tied the sacred thread to personnel of the border security force stationed at the road check post between India and Pakistan in northern Punjab state. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also participated in the celebrations with school children tying rakhis to the Indian Prime Minister. So, here we are coming every year. In 2012, we started it from 2012. So, we are coming every year. These young people are living from their homes. So, they miss their daughters. So, we are coming every year. 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 Raksha Bandhan is a traditional Hindu festival dedicated to the love and bond between brothers and sisters. On this day, sisters tie rakhis around their brother's wrist. In return, brothers offer gifts as a symbol of love and care for their sisters. The sacred thread symbolizes a sense of protection with brothers promising to protect their sisters from harm of any kind. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.